So I spent a really long time in the community section on YouTube today asking you guys what the worst towers in Bloom's Tower Defense 6 are. And you guys came up with some really interesting answer. The Ice Monkey. The Mortar Monkey. The Druid. Or the Druid Monkey. Why is he not a monkey? Looks pretty monkeylicious to me. And last but not least, the Engineer Monkey. You guys decided that those are the four worst towers in the game. So, what was my thought? How about Chimps Mode? How about we play the hardest game mode in the game using the worst towers in the game? Is it possible to beat Chimps with just these towers? And a kind of okay-ish hero, I guess? So Chimps is super duper difficult for a lot of reasons. Each one of these letters stands for something. No continues. No health or one health. No income, no extra farms, no monkey knowledge, that's a big one, no powers, and no selling. All of that added together means this game mode from round 6 to round 100 is going to be very, very, very difficult. When we look at our tower loadout here, we can do a very interesting start here. We can just go for a random ice tower, or a druid, or even an engineer. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do an engineer start here. Let's see how this guy's going to work out for us. So we're able to afford a 2-0 Engineer here without too many issues. And by the way, the Engineer was voted as the worst tower. The worst tower in Balloon's Tower Defense 6. Do you guys really think he's that bad? Now, when I say the worst tower, what I said was the worst tower slash the least useful, which I think is definitely important. Uh, an important way to look at it, because certain towers are very useful, but they still don't do a lot of popping power. For example, an alchemist. Yeah, he's really not that good at popping balloons, but what he does do is a lot of awesome supporting action. So here we go, let's go for an Etienne, right in the middle of the map here. We are using up a lot of our room already. So I decided on a 3-0-0 engineer for now, because he's just popping regular balloons, and honestly, he's doing a really good job at it so far. Uh, these balloons are barely making it through the first circle, and if they are, they're usually getting chopped down before they get through the lake right here. So let's talk a little bit about why each one of these towers is where it is on the list. Why is it the worst tower? Let's focus on ice first, and I think this one makes the most sense out of all of them. Ice, the biggest problem with it is that it can make some of your other towers worse. That's what's terrible about him. Yes, he's actually quite powerful in his own regard. But when you have other random projectiles shooting out here... So let's get the oversized nails and the pin upgrade. Now this should end up being quite powerful here. I think I'm going to go for another engineer, by the way, fairly soon. But before I get there, I've got to go for a mortar. So let's throw him down just... I don't think I need to put anything close together. So let's just throw him down over here and let him just explode some crap. Especially the lead balloons that are going to be coming out in here. Etienne already got his camo detection here, so no worries on that aspect. And long term here, we should have camo detection for him. But right now, that is definitely something I have to keep in mind. I'll be honest, I was a little surprised to see the mortar on this list, because I like to think of the mortar as a pretty good tower in general. But I guess when you compare him to a lot of the other military monkeys, he is a little on the weak side? Kind of? He's got a very specific use point. And that's doing explosive damage in large quantities. But he needs to have some sort of circle-y area for him to do a good amount of damage. And you have to get him to a pretty high level for him to do anything. So that kind of combining together here means that he's not automatically good. And you might even have to micro him manually. Makes him even tougher to use in the game here, guys. So I understand why the mortar's on here, but he's still honestly one of my better towers in the game. This is going to be a game changer for us. The artillery battery. Boom, boom, boom. These blooms got blooms. What do we got for playing with flowers today? These blooms got nothing on us, man. Round 39 is easy, and then round 40? I'm really hoping I can power through this one, but I honestly do not know. So what I'm going to do to be safe here, I'm going to go for another engineer, but I'm going to get a bottom path. A double gun, but this time also with faster engineering. Let's see how well this guy works. All right, Moab, let's throw out these uh, Etienne drones right from the get-go. Seems like we are chugging through the Moab layer pretty quickly. The balloons inside, though, will be a little bit troublesome, but the artillery battery cleans them up easily. No problem there, man. Let's get a faster engineering guy over here. Beautiful, beautiful. So I will be the first person to admit that so far, this challenge has been surprisingly easy. 
everything's been working really, really well together. I know we're on a somewhat easy map, but using the four worst towers in the game, we're dominating pretty hard. And I gotta say, one of the best towers so far has been the artillery battery. 17,000 pops, I mean, comparatively, 1,500, 3,400. Even this guy who's been around the entire game, 6K. This guy's absolutely dominating. Our, our glue monkey? Yeah, he's, his name is glue monkey these days. And we do have to micro him a little bit for these mortars, but or for these moabs, but not bad. Not bad at all. So one of our major issues in this challenge is definitely going to be what can we do late game. Sure, maybe around 1 to 80 is just easy no matter what, but getting up to that round 90, 95, and 100, that's not going to be easy no matter who you are, no matter what you're doing, and no matter how well you're microwing against these moabs. It's still going to be a little bit challenging. So we have to think long term. And right now I have $24,000 saved up. What do I want to build? Well, let's look at our options. We can go for our biggest one, a blue incineration, which I'm definitely looking at right now. Blue incineration looks good. Also, we can go for an Avatar of Wrath or even a Spirit of the Forest, which are all affordable and very, very powerful. Does damage to everything on the screen and can have that weird explody damage thing. That's pretty cool. You can tell the space modes right now, though, are not going easy on us. This is going to be at least a little bit of a struggle. All right, we're popping the balloons. Last mob for 53. Got to move our mortar, and we do pop them. But scary stuffs here, guys. Very scary stuffs. We got to spend our money. Uh, let's get another mortar. Let's go for it. Bloom Generation. Right now, he's not going to be all that helpful, but in the long run, he's going to be super helpful. Shattering shells. And I think the better thing to go for is actually the faster reload. So let's do that. So we're getting to the point that every single round is requiring a mortar micro. I do not like that. Any any mistake could be the end for us. So what I do have, though, is I have the ability to use two different abilities. I can use Etienne's drone ability. <gasps> Etienne's drone ability keeping me alive here, even against these last few blues here. And I also can use my UCAV, or my Combat Aerial Vehicle. Unmanned Combat Aerial Vehicle. Very exciting. But still, I don't want to waste it before I need it. I might need that on 59. So I think even though it's not super efficient, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up getting a Druid kind of in the middle of the map, and I'm going to get him up to a bottom tier 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh-oh. More balloons. Whew. See what happens when you don't micro for one second, man? It can be the death of me. Camel Leds, we've got covered easily. We've got a Mortar. we got Etienne. Easy peasy. We got that. So we're going to go for a Druid here, and we're going to go for the uh, Thorn Swarm on this guy. And I'm going to go for Heart of the Oak, because I don't want round 76 or something weird to kill me, just for no reason. It's only a little bit of money. I think it's worth it. Let's just get him up. Even though Heart of the Thorns, or Heart of, Heart of the Oak, excuse me, is better with a top path, it's still not nothing with a bottom path. Mortar again, saving the day. Artillery battery. Look at the pop count. 50k already. 1500, that guy's doing nothing. Etienne's doing a little bit here, but honestly, not much at all. Let's make sure that this guy's on strong. And then I think I'm actually going to move my mortar uh, closer to the backpack here, because this just is not cutting it. And the combat vehicle has been activated. What you guys did notice is I just got my Snowstorm refreeze here. I got a little afraid of the blues coming out. I still just can't save up that money. Uh, you know, a lot of these upgrades are really, really pricey. Uh, we're talking about 50k for our Bloom Incineration. That's pretty far away. 32,000 for Pop and Awe. 48,000 for this Avatar of Wrath. I mean, realistically, it's pretty much the... Oh, they're ex exactly the same price. Really weird. But what do we want to save up for? Or do we? can we even save up for them at this point? That's the real problem here. So is there anything that can pop Moabs on the cheap with this strategy? Not really. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for, sadly, a fairly expensive Moab Destroyer. And that's going to be mostly, again, mostly, Pop Lush Druids with Thorn Swarms and Heart of the Oaks. But I'm also going to throw in an extra Druid in here. We get a fifth Druid over here. Or is that my fourth? Whatever he is. We're going to get another druid over here. We're going to get up to Hard Thorns and Heart of the Thunder. And I'm hoping, even though he's in kind of a bad spot here, we're hoping that that thunder just jumps all over the place and does enough damage for me to be happy here. Every single one of my druids is going to go on strong, by the way. We do want that strong. 
We want the Moebs to get popped. We don't really care much about the balloons. The Moe the artillery battery and other things will take care of those guys, no problem. I still like to consider round 75 a very difficult round, even though other people don't. So we have 18k saved up. We're gonna use our abilities here. I think a single U cab should be enough to kind of keep us in the game here. But we do have to watch out because round 76 is gonna come up very soon as well, and we have to make sure we have enough popping power for that. So let's combine it all together. And hopefully it'll all work out. A little bit of micro. And 75 is taken care of. Now 76. We're going to freeze them inside of the range of my mortar here. That's going to not obliterate them, but do a really good job. Plus, all the regen balloons are no longer regen balloons because of my heart of the oak druids here. Beautiful. This is not looking good. You cav, go, go, go. Regen's just about overwhelming us here. Will our mortar be strong enough? to stop them all. There's Moabs all the way in the very back over here. Looks like we do defend. We have $35,000 saved up right now, though. That is scary stuff. But it looks like the UCAB is going to save the day here. And we do end up popping around 79. Don't forget, all those reinforced BFBs do get unreinforced by my shattering shells here, which is now finally playing into the game in the way we want it to. And here's our Zoma God. We're going to have to micro this guy hard, but we do have the ability, if we really, really need to, to get a pop and awe or something crazy like an absolute zero or even crazier like an icicle impale or something like that. All possibilities. But let's use our ability nonetheless. Jump these guys out. This oh my god. I'm not going to say it's going to be difficult. But it's not going to be easy. I have a lot of balloons inside. Moab's getting taken care of. Slowly pop them. I would actually prefer them to pop kind of slower than that. And Arctic Wind in the back. Really got to come into play here. I have no extra abilities. I have nothing else that I can use. I'm really relying on my last two mortars and ice towers back here. Can they pull it off? And round 80 is destroyed. But that's still not the end of the game. There's a lot more to go. But I think if I can get $10,000 more, I'll be all set. All we need is a balloon incineration. Again, requiring a lot of micro ceramics all the way in the back back here. But they do succumb. Okay. Oh my god. Are we suck at thumbs? No. Succumbing. Succumbing. Alright. One more round and I think we're going to be able to get our blue incineration or if we really want to, Avatar Wrath. Either way. I think blue incineration is going to be better. Uh, we're going to pop our ability here. I do want to micro at least a little bit. Um, I did pop that pretty early here. Let's move our artillery batter back just a little bit here. Let's throw uh, another ability down. we got one more ice tower left. I'm going to blow it. Looks like our artillery battering is only doing so good. But a bunch of ceramics in the back back here get frozen and slowly popped. And we still don't quite have the money, but it's going to happen very soon. All right, 600 more dollars, and then it should be a chill fest for a little while. Ho hopefully. I want this to be a chill fest for a little bit. It's been hectic all day today. Bloon incineration, baby! There he is. So I'm still watching. There's reinforced balloons getting all the way to the back back here. If I didn't have this ice tower, we'd be dead already. That's why this is scary. And he doesn't have the ability to pop zebras. Don't forget about that. It's all my sentry guns or this uh, random Etienne hitting him in the back that's causing all this to happen. But now you can tell the balloon incineration is actually doing a really solid job here. All this fire, they're going through it once, they're coming around, and they're going through it a second time. They basically make a bunch of wall of fires on the map that are even stronger than a wall of fire from a wizard. So I've discussed a lot about the Ice Tower and the Mortar as why they are worst towers in the game, but what about the Druid? Why would the Druid be the worst tower in the game? I think it's mostly the lackluster fifth tiers. If you really just look at it, Superstorm's too expensive to get in a real game. Spirit of the Forest... It's not bad, but it's just not as useful as you'd want it to be, especially in anything from 90 to 100. And then the Avatar of Wrath is really the only useful upgrade that we can normally use here. But even then, it can be a little upsetting to use, I don't know, I don't want to say properly. You really just need to not just build an Avatar of Wrath, but build five other druids and get an open and get alchemists and buff them in other ways. It's just too expensive to be used in a normal, effective way. So we've only got 20 grand saved up. I'm honestly not sure what I want to build next, but I think my only true option is got to be that Avatar of Wrath. I think it's probably going to be this one or this one. 
I think this one's probably my best bet because I can reach here, here, and here. I don't think he gets any extra range beyond that, though. But, I mean, look at the price, man. I mean, this is going to be cutting it really close. We need another, what, $26,000 just to afford this guy? That's not cheap. All right, DDTs. How are we going to do against these guys? I'll be honest, I didn't like that one bit. Not one baby bit. That's not looking good. That We're not going to survive long with that. We're going to need to use our UCAV, we're going to need to use our ability, and we're going to need to freeze on round 95 just to have a chance here. I think we need to switch the strategy. We cannot get this Avatar of Wrath. He will not help us against... He shouldn't be able to help us against these DDTs, but you never know, I guess. All right, UCAV popping out. Uh, we might have to hope that Etienne reaches level 20 here. That could be the life savior for us. What level is he at? Level 17 still. Oh, man. This is rough already. All right, we're trying for it. Another set of DDTs with an early UCAV. Hopefully this gets through these guys. I don't know if it will. With a freeze at the end. And we barely, barely survive. Another tough battle for us here. Oh my god, what the heck are we going to get to pop these things? Ooh, and oh my god. And I've misplaced my fire. Trying to pop the DDTs. We're in a bad spot right now. My micro is not very good there, but it looks like it won't matter that much. Our ice tower again comes out really, really well. All right, 95's coming up very soon here. I can't even afford the ice glimpse like I want to. 100, 200, 2,000, 2,000. I mean, we're talking for about 37,000 to afford this guy at least. I don't think we're going to get that in this round. But maybe. Ice glimpse is our next best bet. To slow down these Moabs just right in my fire. Ah, I, could, I, could, I could probably make that work. I may need a freeze here, but so far it's going pretty well. I'm also going to add in here my Ice Tower. I think it's the best thing to do. We got an Icicle Impale. And there we go. We got Icicle Impale up. That's good. It's going to slow down all these Oh My Gods. And set us up for round 95 here. He's going to have automatic camera detection. But I want to get make sure he can not only hit the DDTs. I want to make sure he can damage these DDTs. So I think I need to get the Metal Freeze. Alright. I think that's the only way you can damage the DDTs, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So this could be a, a Super Tom Bombo mistake right here. We're going to see if it plays out the way I want it to. And I'm going to put this guy on strong. Add that all together. Hopefully, we get a round 95 win. And, even more helpful, hopefully a round 99 and 100 win. Those are both going to be very difficult to take down here. All right, so far, so good. I like purples. I like ceramics. I don't like DDTs. They are scary. All right, we're going to move our fire up a little bit because this is right where the Ice Columb Pale is hitting. And I'm going to blow my UCAP a little early here. Our artillery battle, we're going to move him up just a little bit here. Looks like these guys are doing a decent job against them. And so far, DDT is getting absolutely slobber knocked right now. All right, let's get that freeze ready. You know, we don't even need it. Blew these puppies up. Ice Glim Pale was beautiful against those balloons right there. Beautiful. And the next question is, what are we going to spend the rest of our money on? So far, I don't have a specific upgrade that I think we need. It's more about what do, what could we possibly use. Um, you know what? I'm still liking my, my Bernie stuff fire spot here. This is pretty good. You know? And we leave him on strong here, so he keeps hitting those, oh my gods, man. This is beautiful. These guys are just going to burn to a crisp right there. They move so slow. This is amazing. So this one is going to kind of suck. Uh, we've got to pop the first layer of the, oh my god, just to be able to unreinforce it. So that first layer, you do have to officially pop here. But the reinforced BFBs inside uh, do get unreinforced. So this is not at all difficult compared to the previous rounds especially. Alright, more micro. These mortars, you can tell why people don't like to use them. They are difficult. You have to micro and manage a lot of stuff all at once. This one is going to be crazy. Round 98, but again, this blue incineration is going to de-reinforce these BFBs, which is going to take a lot of pressure off of us. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave these guys right here. We're going to put our artillery battery in the middle here. 
I'm going to U-Cav in just a second here. I want to do it a little early because I'm hoping to get it back around 99 or at the very least around 100 because those DDTs may be problematic. I'm not sure. Okay, we're going to need to Bloom Generation back here now. Very close battle. A lot of ceramics almost sneaking through, but they do not in the end. And so many balloons popping. Crazy talk. Crazy talk. Actually, round 99 shouldn't be too bad. I think the DPs will all get stunned right here. Hopefully. If my Ice Skull Impale does the right thing. I had to go for an early freeze here. Bloom Generation doing a good job overall. Artillery Battery got to move him around just a little bit. We have $30,000 saved up now. What do we want to do with our $30,000? Let's think about that for one second. I think Druids are probably our best bet. Just spam the Druids. So let's turn off Auto Start. And let's spam a couple Druids here in the meantime. Uh, we've got the ability to overclock somebody. We can overclock our Bloom Incineration. We can get a Century Paragon. But he's not that good. <laughs> or we could just get a bunch of Poplus Druids and just spam them. Because that's all we need to do. Alright. Poplus Druids it is, my friends. These guys are not great, but I think they're going to be the tower that we need to build. All right. Poplust with Thorn Swarm. We do not need the Heart of the Oak, though. That's just literally a waste of money at this point. And I did not expect to have to do it this way. I would have much preferred to have an Avatar of Wrath, but you know what? I think that Icicle Impale was clutch. I think we would have lost around 95 without him. We have a UCAP just about up here. Actually, doesn't even matter. Etienne is officially at level 20. We have an all-out UCAV non-stop, but we can make him even more powerful now with our activated ability. Sweet. All right. Bloom Incineration. Uh, we should probably move this guy around. Keep the fire on him at all times. Or in front of him at all times. Artillery Battery 2. Can we micro this guy? It's tough, I'll be honest, man. It's really tough here. The DDTs are going to be a little bit of a pain here if this Ice Clone Pale doesn't hit them. I'll be straight with you guys. This could be rough. Oh, no! Okay, we do. We pop them. We get them frozen. Looking good. I don't think we can lose this game now, boys. I think we got this one covered. Ice Clone and Pale, and we officially take down Chimps with the four worst towers in the game. Absolutely beautiful. Another UCAP popping out here to finish this off. And we are victorious, my friends. Wonderful. Of course, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you press that like button for me. Make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't. And of course, have a super duper delicious day.